Just another slow week in Trumpville. <laughs> Let's start with the meal that made the media squeal. We have pizzas, we have 300 hamburgers, many, many french fries. Many, many french fries. <laughs> that seems like a year ago. But the media lost their lunch over this, enraged at Trump for serving food everyone on earth loves to eat. Think about it. How many times have you had to go to some formal event and plan what you're going to eat after you eat? Because the first dinner sucks. It's always like some tiny bird on a plate, all bones and veins. It's like you're eating an old lady's fist. <laughs> Trump's been there many times. He thought, hey, what would I eat after I ate? Of course, burgers, pizza. It's what we all want. Yet people lost their minds mainly over this. Do we have no food for you? Because we have a shutdown. Or do we give you some little quick salads that the first lady will make along with, along with the second lady? They'll make some salads. And I said, you guys aren't into salads. It's true. Nobody is into salads. Nobody. I mean, has anyone ever on death row ever asked for their last meal to be a chef salad? It's always burgers and pizza, making it the gold standard for everyone. But CNN went for the sexist angle. That's appalling. Uh, it seems to me like the president will not be happy until there is not one single female Republican voter in the country. It's incredibly sexist. We aren't all here to make salads for men. This is one of those things where sometimes what people say when they're being funny is exposes exactly who they are and what they think. Mm, but wait, aren't they the ones conflating gender with salad? I'll have you know, ladies, I make a mean salad. Lettuce, tomatoes, onions. Of course, it's on top of a burger, but it's a salad, <laughs> you pathetic, pathetic sexist. Disgusting. Anyway, this media response again proves two things. The press will use anything to trash Trump, and it's as if the trashing is always in lockstep, because it is. According to the Media Research Center, for Trump in 2018, coverage was 90% negative. And for the second year in a row, Russia was the most covered Trump topic, which makes me think, if space aliens landed on Earth and proceeded to devour the human race, annihilating billions of innocent humans in a brutal rampage of mutilation and dismemberment, the surviving media would ask, how does this affect the Mueller probe? <laughs> the media has been so screwed up since Trump that they even see white privilege among blacks. That's a whole nother long conversation about white privilege and things that you uh, have the privilege of doing that people of color don't have the privilege of. How do and I have the privilege of white privilege? David, by virtue of being a white male, you have white privilege. Uh, Ariva, I hate to break it to exactly. you, but you should have been better prepped. I'm black. <laughs> Wait, he's black? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, holy crap. But the big news of the week, Nancy Pelosi, a.k.a. the rich aunt who still gives you a lousy Christmas gift, <laughs> urges President Trump in a letter to deliver a State of the Union in writing. I bet he took that seriously. <laughs> I wonder how he looked after reading her letter. <laughs> Flea market. All right, so how did Trump respond to Nancy? He canceled her trip to Brussels. <laughs> 30 minutes. <laughs> the only canceled flight people will applaud. <laughs> he actually wrote her a letter. It's priceless. In it, he says, due to the shutdown, I am sorry to inform you that your trip's been canceled. Yeah. He's sorry. <laughs> Somehow I doubt that he's really sorry. <laughs> I wonder how he felt when he dropped that letter in the mail. <laughs> Keep going. It's too perfect. Now, uh, Trump canceled the trip, but it could have been worse. Think about it. He could have boarded the plane beforehand and filled it with fast food. <laughs> Or he could have let it take off, then halfway there rerouted it, rerouted it to Mar-a-Lago and never tell Nancy. 
So as she steps off the aircraft, she's thinking, wow, Brussels looks a lot like Palm Beach. <laughs> or once they were ready to depart, announced that they're having a very special pilot flying this plane. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. So Nancy got off easy, but so did Donald. Think about it. Nancy's initial request just gave him the perfect excuse to get out of the worst thing ever, the State of the Union. It sucks. It's boring. It's dreadful. It's the ceremonial version of a colonoscopy. And I know, I had one on Wednesday. Let's roll the tape. Sorry, uh, wrong tape. Can we roll the tape of my colonoscopy? <laughs> All right, one more time. Can we see my colonoscopy? How did Bruce Willis get in there? I hope he reads the card. Anyhow, old joke, the State of the Union takes place in D.C., which means if it happens, I have to go to D.C., and I don't want to go to D.C. To get to D.C., I have to take a train through Delaware and Baltimore first, which is like having sex with two goats in order to have sex with a mule. <laughs> So Nancy's letter gave Trump and me a golden ticket out of a nightmare. Trump should cancel the D.C. thing, get a large arena, pack it full of fans, have a great night. The press will have to cover it. After all, it's their job, and it's going to be hilarious. And the Dems will feel compelled to respond <laughs> with the same two miserable stiffs who together can ma barely manage a pulse. It's too good to pass up. Imagine what Trump could come up with. It could be the greatest thing ever. Tired of the same old boring State of the Union address featuring 45 minutes of soaring generalizations, followed by 50% applause, 50% expressionless faces? Then get ready for President Trump's State of the Milky Way Galaxy because it's the best galaxy of all the galaxies address. Live from the surface of Titan, Saturn's largest moon. Because Neptune was too low energy. Boy, oh boy, that's a low energy planet. This isn't your earthly State of the Union. No Congress, no Capitol, no problem. The usual crowd's not invited, but the media's invited. Why? Because in space, no one can hear the media whine about the president's Twitter feed, the president giving funny nicknames to his enemies, Brian, Chuck, and Nancy, the president eating well-done steak, the president being aggressively honest. We give billions and billions of dollars to these foreign countries that don't give a damn about us. The president asking NATO to pay their fair share or any accomplishment in his first two years of office. Plus, there'll be tons of universe-changing announcements, like how the new Space Force has already won the first contact war of 2027 against the, the evil space from the Andromeda Galaxy. Or how it's turning the rings of Saturn into actual onion rings. With onion and dipping sauce from Chef Fillet. And of course, how he plans to build a space wall around Earth and make the Martians pay for it. It's the state of the Milky Way Galaxy because it's the best galaxy of all the galaxies are dragged.